Hello boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Folks Brow. Today we're going to continue with our Back to Basics series. We're going to carry on with another building block, the humble DC to DC converter. Um, it will be a, a little episode, there's not too much to it. We'll build it on the breadboard, we'll take a few measurements, we'll run through the circuitry and uh, we can take it from there. So let's not waste any time, let's get on the bench and let's have a look. Alright, so here we are on the bench and if you remember from our uh, previous episodes, obviously we're putting these basic building blocks together uh, for a product at the end, but we looked at this emitter uh, follow voltage regulator with some a differential feedback in here. I've made some modifications to this circuit. I've just put in a fixed resistor here, 5K6, as the current limiting or biasing resistor for the base of that uh, transistor. Um, I've put in a blocking diode here. Obviously, we have capacitance. I've added some capacitance here. We have capacitance here. Now, what is going to happen if, uh, for whatever reason, that power goes off up there, your upstream power, the, the emitter voltage is going to be here still because these capacitors will have voltage. This base voltage will fall very quickly, but because this uh, base emitter volt drop is going to be huge, you will blow that transistor. So we've just added a little blocking diode in there. We've dealt with the crowbar, its resistor and Zener, little smoothing cap. Current limiting resistor into the gate to drive the SCR. So today we're going to deal with this because what we've done is we've taken 56 volts down to about 34 volts because this IC is powered by uh, max 40 volts. So we want to take this voltage down and we're going to use a, a buck converter. So we're going to take it down from 34 volts and we want 15, a nice 15 volts on the output. So we need to have a look before we go into detail at the circuit. The chip that we're going to use is this uh, MC34063A. It's an invert, it well, can act as inverting regulator, buck or boost switching. So, what does that mean? It means very simply this output over here, uh, there on the emitter. Uh, we can either take the input voltage, in other words, the VCC, we can boost that voltage, we can step it up via DC. And uh, we're doing this because we don't want to use the transformer. Or if we're not boosting it, we can buck it, we can step it down, or we can invert it. So if that voltage was, uh, for example, positive 12, we can invert it and make this voltage minus 12. Uh, features of the chip. It's got current, uh, current limiting, which is very nice. Um, we can switch up to 1.5 amps. Frequency operation up to 100 kilohertz. And it's got a precision 2 volt, 2% uh, reference. And they're talking about this 1.25 volt reference regulator, which we'll see is the feedback later on. But what it does is it says it's guaranteed, if we do everything right, to keep the output voltage within 2% of what we've calculated. So, uh, very nice. Um, uh, let me go to, uh, well, there's a few things to take note of up here. Saturation voltage of 1.3. The comparative voltage that they want is 1.25. In other words, our reference uh, bias current we don't care about. Um, but what else do we see that is interesting over here? Total supply current to the device, 4 milliamp. Nothing really jumping out there. Uh, some waveforms. So, 
what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building on this step down converter now i'm not going to be using an external switch i don't need the external switch we don't need that much current we're going to be using a, a, a modification on that circuit up there and if you download this uh, this uh, data sheet where would it be let's just go there uh, what you should get probably later on they give you some layout uh, here we go the formulas so they give you the three formulas are you using it as a step up a step down more voltage inverting uh, converter we're using the step down converter and basically you need to calculate uh, three components the timing capacitor the sense resistor the out capacitance sorry four and the inductor that you need to use so let me get the next thing out and then we'll have a look at that so here is basically how i got to the component calculations first you're calculating uh, the duty cycle in other words the on versus off which is basically your output voltage divided by your input voltage with a few things taken into account like the forward voltage of the, uh, the diode the saturation of the switch which we looked at in the data sheet which was 1.3 volts and the output voltage but really you are looking for in the case of a step down 50 percent or 0.5 or less and you don't want one then we basically calculating the on time versus the off time again we choose a frequency so it's one over f i've chosen that we that this thing will switch at 80 kilohertz it covers our on and off time uh, we calculate the timing capacitor and we calculate the peak current through the switch i've said we want to a maximum of one amp we're never going to get there not, not with our load but yeah give us one amp um, based on that peak current of the switch we calculate the sense resistor that we will show you in the circuit which is 300 milliohms we then go calculate the inductance that we require the inductance size which is just to input minus input voltage minus your saturation voltage minus your output voltage divided by the peak current of the switch times the on time we calculated that at roughly about 113 microhenry i don't have that lying around so i've used something slightly bigger remember this would be our minimum inductance required uh, based on that we now go and work out what uh, ripple voltage we want if we know the ripple voltage we know and we know the inductance and the well, the current of the switch we can now go work out what output size capacitor we want the minimum size again and then there's a little bit of a calculation here to help you decide how to size that voltage divider for the resistors now i know i want 15 volts out so simple calculation if we looked at the bias in current 120 and a 10 well that would give me at 15 volts 1.25 volts there at that point which is the voltage feedback so if we look at the circuit uh, nice and simple let's just zoom in a bit sorry for that So of course, I have different values. Uh, that capacitor we will take out. I don't have 100 milli Henry. I've got, uh, well, it's 0 0.1. Uh, well, it's 100 micro Henry. So I only have 100 milli Henry uh, inductor lying around. The input uh, inductor uh, capacitor over there, they've got it as. Mic roughly in their in their 
in the data sheet I don't have that lying around so I put in a 220 we calculated this at 270 well 170 pico I didn't have 170 pico lying around so I used 270 uh, all these uh, multi-layer ceramics are X7R rated in other words temperature relatively temperature stable so we've got our input we're putting that capacitor there uh, because as this thing switches and pulls current we want to be able to supply it so we've got that voltage uh, that relatively biggish capacitor there the uh, current will now flow through our voltage sensing resistor to uh, pin number seven i peak and uh, basically inside this chip it'll read the difference between input voltage and the i peak voltage and then it knows if it's going uh, if that potential difference is too much it knows it's going uh, pulling too much current and it will start shutting itself down so it i don't have a 300 milli uh, milliohm resistor lying around so i've just bridged it but in the final circuit we will put that in but if uh, that potential difference goes too much this will shut itself down to protect itself it also goes into the uh, collector of our switch we're not uh, using this as anything fancy the Darlington pair inside so we're just going through the collector the logic inside here based on that capacitor and that feedback down there will switch this transistor on and off the internal transistor the emitter voltage will now flow through our inductor and onto our output rail obviously we've got this capacitor and we've got this freewheeling or flyback diode so and then we've got our output capacitance filter now i don't have the second one in i will update the drawing the 47 mic will come out and we'll only have 220u there for the moment because it seems to be more than enough and that should give us a stable 15 volt dc so let's have a look how the circuit works i will explain it basically right so if we look at the uh, the interesting part of the circuit the, uh, where the magic is going to happen basically what we have is this this is internal to the ic that is our transistor that's going to be switching on off but i thought i'd draw this a switch we have an inductor and we know that an inductor resists a change in current so initially when we close that switch this is going to resist the change in current so the current will go up very slowly very gradually and it will charge this inductor and how it does charge it this inductor will store the energy in a magnetic field so a magnetic field will grow around the inductor like this the current will flow it will charge up that capacitor and it will flow into the load when we open the switch well the inductor doesn't like the change in current so it's going to do everything it can to keep that current flowing so the current will start coming down and the current will keep going that way and this capacitor will keep will start discharging into that resistor obviously when the switch is off well we create a flyback because we'll have the current flowing in that direction that's why it's called a flyback or, or freewheeling but let's show you a little bit more so what i'm going to do i'm going to draw in red what will happen so the switch is closed when the switch is closed we said this inductor will resist the change in current so the first thing that happens is we will have a high voltage that will start here or a higher voltage with relation to that side that will negatively bias our shot key diode and remember i'm not using a normal diode here i'm using a shot key so current can't flow that way that'll be plus that side will be negative this will be more positive to this side remember it's trying to stop the current flow so this becomes more positive and as we get to a point where the charge is fine then the current will flow normally 
a little swap round, but don't worry about that. So what we're going to see is that. Okay. The current this side, well, voltage this side will still be positive and negative on the ground. So what we've dealt with is the pulse that goes like this. It's switched on. Remember, that is how this is going to seem. So what we're going to see is this voltage going up like that if we were measuring voltage and the same if we're measuring current because if you think of it like uh, the, the relationship between it between because of Ohm's law so if you had to actually measure it you would see that and we'll have a look on the scope so our switch is switched on this is what has happened our switch is now going to open in other words the voltage is going to go like that the black part now. So the inductor is now going to switch the other way. So what is going to happen? This side will now become more negative than that side. Because remember our inductor doesn't want to see a change in current flow. So it's going to now collapse the magnetic field to power it that the capacitor because now it's stored we've got a load the capacitor is also going to do that and this is now negative in relation to this side so our current flow is going to be like that conventional current flow okay and this is going to repeat itself as long as we switch. I know it's a difficult con concept, but the thing to remember is our inductor doesn't want to see a change in current. Like our capacitor doesn't want to see a change in voltage. And together they work together with this freewheeling diode or flyback diode. So you're going to see a slow rise and a slow descent. Of course, this is in the ideal world. What you're more likely to see is, uh, as this happens, you will probably see something that goes very sharp up like this, and then it will come down. Again, it will go very sharp like this, and then it will come down. Okay, this is because we've got noise and whatever. But you get the idea, and that's also got to do with the magnetics of the inductor. So, very simple. So, let's have a look at the breadboard and see what we have. So, here we are on the breadboard. I've changed it around a little bit. You see, I've got rid of a lot of these uh, hanging wires because obviously, we're now working with a switching converter. All these wires create stray reactants stray resistance and stuff like that and they create noise for us if we're trying to measure this on an oscilloscope so I've replaced them with these type of bridge wires and you buy them or you can buy them in little boxes like this different sizes and they work quite well uh, this part of the circuit we've been through uh, 56 volts coming in on that rail and uh, our little differential amplifier down here for our voltage regulator our blocking diode that we've added the little sensing circuit down here for the SCR smoothing on the SCR gate fuse protection up there so what we do the output of this circuit are 34 volts we're coming up to this rail over here and you can see i've got my uh, nice 220 microfarad capacitor on the input that goes across to our nc3463 up here up here we have our timing connector our ground 
uh, output we come to our inductor we also have our smoothing capacitor to ground and then over here these two resistors over there that's just our uh, uh, voltage divider for our uh, 1.25 feedback 1.25 volt feedback and then all I've done up here is I've put a current limiting resistor and an LED in to see that the circuit's on. So what I'm going to do first place we're going to probe is here on the output. I'm going to keep moving around the output. We'll probe the output Then what I'll do, well I'm first going to take out this uh, smoothing capacitor on the output so that we can see the uh, frequency of the switching so that you can see that it is actually switching because once I put the smoothing capacitor in you're going to miss a lot of the action and then you will actually only see something else. So let me get you up to the, the scope and I will take that output capacitor or that uh, smoothing capacitor with the ripple I will take it out and you can see how effective it is. So let's do that. Right, here we are back again. I just want to show you where we're probing. We're probing at that point after the inductor. So I've taken the capacitor out. I haven't plugged the probe in yet. But what I want you to notice is that we're pulling roughly, if you look at those two middle lines, because my power supply is in series, you're pulling roughly 100 milliamps okay so we're wasting a lot of power by taking that cap out because of the ripple so what i'm going to do i'm going to plug our probe in there let's just bring oops sorry so let's bring this into Uh, into perspective uh, well I don't need 20 volts 10 volts will be fine and there you can see the pulse that it's creating the on and off let's make it a little bit bigger and we'll bring it down uh, 2 volts is just too much There we go, we'll make it a bit wider. So there you can see our output switching pulse. Okay, uh, let's have a look. Let's see if we've got the frequency. And we can see down there, it's switching at a frequency of roughly 86.9 kilohertz. Uh, I want to look at it, the vertical, we want to look at the peak to peak voltage as well as the average voltage. We're not interested in RMS on the square wave, square wave. we'd rather look at in the average. Okay, let's see peak to peak, 34 volts and the average is roughly 28. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put that capacitor back in. Uh, let me get around here. Obviously, polarity is important. There are capacitors in, and you can see our noise has gone really down peak to peak 800 millivolts, and our average voltage has come down. We're now in the regulation band. And of course our power supply, the current has come way down. So now we are roughly at 60 milliamp, so a whole 40 milliamp. But let's come back to our scope. Let me bring the trigger up. We'll change the time base a little bit. And let's 
make this a little bit better for us to actually see something. So let me bring it down. Of course, I could probably AC couple this. It might have been an easier way to do it, but uh, and we'll bring our trigger up. There we can sort of see what I was talking about. There we go. Maybe 200 mini volts is a little bit too much. A little bit of 500. Bring it up a bit. And there you can see what I was talking about. The emitter switch is on. Let me make it brighter for you. So these are sharp peaks here. The emitter is switching on. The emitter switch is off. So in that on period, it's charging. You can see the noise in there. That is the inductor resisting the change in current so its polarity is changing and things like that the magnetic field is building up it's resisting it resisting it resisting it and then there's no more voltage supply on here and that is the inductor discharging and the same cycle repeats itself And that is the inductor. There isn't really much interesting to see on on on, on the back converter because there's not really much to it. There are ways to improve the circuit. We're not going to go into that here. Uh, what we could have used is another MOSFET and used some sort of synchronous switching so we drive the uh, the first MOSFET would be our transistor that we're using and the second MOSFET will uh, be in the place of the shot key diode and that would actually help clamp this negative voltage and that's about it to prevent it from going too far down um, it's actually giving us quite a nice regular uh, waveform. We're sitting at uh, roughly five micro sec, uh, sorry, five milliseconds per division. So yeah, I'm happy. Obviously, you don't see see the switching now because of the the capacitor and the inductor, the combined effects of that. And what is important to know is that that capacitor and inductor over there L1 C5 are acting as an LC filter so you can get your head around that very simple so there's not much to the 34063 it's giving us a spot on spot on spot on wow output voltage of course in the next series we're going to use a normal linear voltage regulators now to take this 16 volts down to 12 to, and to 5 because I want a 5 uh, volt rail so I want a 12 volt a 5 volt and a 3.3 volt rail because we're going to ultimately going to be powering a microcontroller so yep that is our buck regulator So here we are at the end of another episode of our Back to Basics series. 
buck converter, really not much to it. If you're using a, a chip like the MC34063, it does everything for you. A few little components you have to put out extra inductor, capacitor, and a diode, and some resistors. Really not much to it. The mass is very, very basic. Uh, you should keep a, a couple around in your parts bin. They can drive up to about 1.5 amps, although I haven't tried to go that far. I don't have that much power requirement. But yeah, um, as I said earlier, we're going to be taking this. We're going to be building on it. So our next step before we get to the microcontrollers is we're going to uh, put in some linear regulators, uh, three terminal devices, and that we've already l covered how... A regulator like that works the internals by doing it with uh, the transistors that we did in the beginning. Uh, with our emitter follower uh, differential feedback uh, amplifier voltage regulator. So we've covered the internals of the low dropout, well, linear dropout, regula uh, linear reg voltage regulators, and from there we are going to have a look at that next time and then we'll just have a look at the microcontrollers in the last phase of this and then we will see what we can do with that and we will pretty much all of these building blocks are independent you would change it to suit yourself but definitely um, you should keep a couple of three four oh six threes around they're very very helpful they're relatively cheap I think they're about five five or six South African rands a chip and um, very helpful they can get you out of a lot of uh, nasty situations um, as always I hope you had fun I hope you enjoyed yourselves I hope you learned something uh, until next time be safe take care cheers